Hi, welcome back. Um, I have the opportunity to get out in the workshop for a couple of hours, so I'm actually going to continue with the uh, bandaging of the wing. Right, here we are. So the next chapter, leading on from the the joining of the wings that I did in the last one, I'm now going to do the bandaging of the wing and, and work associated with that really. Let's have a look at the wing on the building board. First things I want to do with the wing, it's yes, I've sanded it where the glue, a bit of the glue escaped, the Gorilla Glue sanded it, that's good. And the first thing I want to do is offer it up to the fuselage, mainly because I know some comments have been made that the wing doesn't actually fit the fuselage, when I say it doesn't fit it, the trailing edge joint needs a bit of attention, which it does. So you can see here, what I've done, I've already sanded the trailing edge. I've actually cut a bit of a triangle off. You can imagine the trailing edge follows down this line here. There's the trailing edge, follows down to about there. And that's the bit I've trimmed off to go into former F3 where it locates. Leave a bit of a gap because you're going to put the bandage round. So you want a bit of a gap there that the bandage will fill. Uh, make sure that the front has been sanded square to the former as well. And the other thing that I've done, I've marked on the wing where the fuselage goes so that, let's just turn it over, a bit difficult. So I've marked down here where the fuselage edges go so that I've got no possibility of overstepping the mark when I'm putting the bandage on. Not that I will because if we look at where I've marked on the wing, you'll see here, let's move that into place. This is where the fuselage goes. And I've just laid the bandage down on here and this is the bandage position here. So I'm going to put that on now. <clears throat> All right, so with the, the wing on the deck, I've got my bandage, which I've already checked in the lap. It goes, it does overlap underneath. So as long as I put that roughly there and I'm going to make sure when I go underneath, you'll see in a moment how I lap it. Now, debating about what to use for the, um, the adhesive for this. Traditionally, it's epoxy resin, laminating resin, two parts. But you may not have that. You may not want to go out and buy some of that just for this job. There are other materials, as I said, I think, in an earlier video, uh, video that are equally as good PVA. You could use, and I was going to use PVA on this, but then I decided, you know what, I need to use up my um, Easy Coat. And this is no advert for the guys, it's just uh, Deluxe Materials Easy Coat there, which is a laminating and uh, finishing resin, water based, which is a great thing about it. You saw me use it when I did the other video, or if you looked at the other video, of covering a model with brown paper. That's where I used it. Anyway, so I'm just going to wet my bandage down. You can see when it's wet, you can see it sort of change colour as the under side shows through, the veneer shows through. Just going to keep that a little bit straighter there. And notice I haven't put any more on my brush. You really don't need a lot. Just enough to wet it. Try not to, when you're pushing at the 
bandage. Try not to use the tips of the brush. I'll show you if, what happens if you do. Let's try and replicate that. If you do that, then you can see what happens. It pushes the fibres apart. You can see down there, which we don't want. So let's just try and rectify that. And again, also don't pull the fibre, the cloth bandage with your fingers because again that will stretch the fibers. Now a good thing for doing this would be a radiator roller, a foam roller, you can just roll it on, absolutely brilliant. I did have a look but unfortunately uh, I haven't got any left, I thought I did have some but I haven't so I'm going to have to replenish my stock because they come in really helpful, really handy and in fact think about it, can also use it for the painting stage of the model. Just make sure that's thoroughly wet down there. You can see the light coloured bandage is where the resin hasn't yet soaked through. Now don't worry about a thicker edge on here because we're going to sand that down. Oh, to be quite honest, that's hidden inside the fuselage, this side. So, arguably, you don't really need to. So, let's just do this, the trailing edge. And again, just wet it. Be careful not to pull it too much. And then turning it over. And that's why I've got the baking paper underneath, so that it doesn't drip on my workbench because it can be quite a messy job. So just holding that into position here and then just smoothing that down, pulling it away from the trailing edge, pulling it forwards because of the wrap around. Just putting the pressure on there. Don't forget this is the bit that's going to be seen when a scene because it's not covered by the fuselage, it's the underside. So, when I finish this, I want this to be smooth, the surface. But then I am being really, really pedantic about it because, you know, I keep going back to the fact that this is not a museum piece. This is a sports semi-scale model. So, does it really matter about the odd lump and bump? No, it's just personal pride really. One thing to avoid when you're putting the bandage on, don't apply the resin to the surface first of all. Apply it through the bandage. And that way you're not gonna, in effect, give it too, too much resin and just round the leading edge there. Feathering it down onto the underside. And I've got my pencil marks there to show me that I'm still there in more or less in line. And I'm just going to now these loose edges here I could use a pair of scissors and cut those off there or I could just let them go dry and then sand them off. Again, your decision. There is no right or wrong way of doing it. I keep saying whatever works for you is the right way. You know, people have commented on the way that I do things. Oh, you know, that's not necessarily the best way. It's my way. <laughs> Therefore, it is the best way. Just get my offset scissors, which were the only ones to hand. Leave those raggedy edges. I don't want that turned under though. I certainly don't want it doubled up in thickness because that would make a big lump. 
And the final, just blending that in with the other Excellent. So that is the wing bandaged. We've not finished on it yet. I will come back later and I will give that another coat just to infill the weave. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Let's try and get it on the camera. Hopefully when it, you get the light shine you can see the weave. I will be putting another coat of the um, easy coat on it later just to fill that weave in a bit more but just checking the edges now making sure they all are stuck down rolling the brush on the edges so it's acting like a little roller in its own right like that <clears throat> yeah it's looking that's looking good to me and I've got enough around that those edges there edges are the worst thing just make sure where the hole is where the cables for the servo are going to come up I just want to make sure that the bandage is well wetted in that area because I will be putting my scalpel through there later to cut it. So that's it done. Now the great thing about Easy Coat, it's like an epoxy resin in the sense that it will go off quite quickly. Um, so it just it says here that it can be sanded easily and painted after 15 to 20 minutes. That's how quick this stuff goes off, which is really good. So I'm not even going to pour the contents out of there. I'm going to leave that in there because if I come back in a little while, half an hour, I'll be able to give that its second coat.